Hello, my name is Jay Doucette. I'm one of the trauma surgeons here at UC San Diego, and I'm also one of the directors of emergency management. And I'm here today to talk to you about the use of our Motorola M-Turbo digital emergency management radios, sometimes called the 400 megahertz emergency system. This is a system of walkie-talkies we have installed at both the Hillcrest and Thornton campuses that allow us to communicate during a disaster or other emergency and allow us to maintain communications even when other forms of communication have dropped out. These are walkie-talkies that have uh, been developed to, for this specific use uh, for businesses and hospitals. And this particular radio system is uh, very uh, powerful and sophisticated. But I'm going to show you today the easy way to use these radios and how you can use this radio uh, if you've not had much experience with uh, walkie-talkies in the past. The radio is a, um, a small handheld radio. It's a, uh, a radio that uses the 400 megahertz business band, uh, which doesn't mean anything uh, except that it, that happens to be where it, uh, where it resides in the radio spectrum. There, uh, the system is uh, uh, a robust system and works well at both campuses. And there's just a little bit of information you need to know to be able to use this walkie-talkie uh, safely and effectively. Um, these are digital radios, and so as a result, they have some features uh, that are a little different than maybe a walkie-talkie you played with as a, as a kid. These walkie-talkies uh, have um, a lithium battery, and uh, they might last much longer than a regular radio, and they use a repeater system, so that actually extends their range quite considerably. Um, because they use a digital system, they, tr they translate your voice into a digital signal that's then transmitted uh, to the repeater, and that's sent out to the other radios as a digital signal, which is then gets converted back to voice uh, and audio in the receiving radio. Um, this uh, makes it easy uh, to have good, clear communications with the radio and provides a lot of features that uh, are transparent to, to the user but makes the system easier to use. When you're issued a radio like this during an emergency, the radio you'll receive will be given to you by the radio officer, usually near the incident command center, either at Hillcrest uh, or, or La Jolla. Um, the radio he'll give you will have um, the EPNR uh, phone number and a radio number on it, and usually at the same time you'll be issued with a call sign, a tactical call sign is what it's called, and that's just what you should call yourself on the radio. We'll talk more about that in, in a few minutes. But uh, the radio itself will be given to you fully charged. The radio, if it's used normally, should last uh, with the charge with the lithium-ion battery on the back for several hours. Of course, the more you transmit, um, the longer, uh, the, the, la the, the less time you'll have before the battery needs to be recharged. There are individual chargers for these radios, but most of the time we'll use a bank charger, which is located at the Incident Command Center to recharge these radios. The heart of the system is the, the repeater, and then we have two repeaters. One of them is installed on top of the Hillcrest Hospital, and the other is installed on top of the Thornton Hospital. By having a repeater, the radio doesn't have to have a, a very long range. It only needs to get as far as the repeater, and then that signal is retransmitted at a much higher power through the whole area. That means uh, with these walkie-talkies, even though you may not be close to the person you're trying to talk to in another walkie-talkie, the walkie-talkie will still get there because it'll use that repeater to rebroadcast its signal from a very high point with a lot of power. This is important when you're talking about using radios in hospitals. Hospitals have a lot of shielding and a lot of things inside them that interfere with radio transmission. For instance, if you're close to an MRI scanner or even a CT scanner or the radiology department, or any rooms that are lined with lead, such as the operating room, or close to the core of the building, like near an elevator shaft, radio signals are not going to be transmitted very well. However, the repeater overcomes some of this and does allow your signal to get out. However, it is quite possible you can be in some parts of a hospital and your radio will not reach the repeater. If that's the case, you're going to have to move your location, sometimes only a few feet, moving towards a window, moving away from a wall, moving away from elevators or scanners or uh, x-ray uh, areas or OR areas will usually make your radio work better. Um, these repeaters uh, have emergency power, so even if the power uh, does go out uh, citywide, the repeaters will continue to function on hospital emergency power. So this system uh, provides you good voice quality. Um, it provides long battery life. It, uh, the radios themselves are, are very well designed. It's a very successful system. Uh, Motorola has sold a lot of these systems, and uh, that's one of the reasons why we went with this particular system. 
it uh, does uh, provide a lot of robust uh, characteristics. The bank chargers to recharge these radios and where these radios are stored are in the incident command centers both at uh, Hillcrest and Thornton. And we keep a number of radios in this location. These radios will be issued to officers and members of the incident command system and any persons working with emergency management who need to have com mobile communications capability. It's important to remember that in a disaster, cell phones and other forms of uh, communication may fail or may be degraded to text-only capability or may not be usable at all. But this system will persist. But these radios do need to be stored properly. And when they're not in use, they should be on a charger. So there are a lot of options with these radios, including um, a lot of sophisticated ways to uh, actually call up only a single user or to call a group of users. But um, that also provides a lot of opportunities for confusion. And generally speaking, the way, usual way we use these radios is basically one person's transmitting on a particular channel, and everybody else is listening for, for the message. Um, we not gonna, we're not going to get into the sophisticated modes of how to use this radio to uh, uh, call single users or, or uh, multiple single users. Uh, we're only talking about using it basically one to all method. Um, the radios are dedicated to our use. They're on a licensed uh, frequency. Uh, individual users don't have to have an individual license to use these radios. The radio itself is pretty tough. It's built to a uh, tough industrial standard. It's difficult to damage, but they can be destroyed, so um, they do require a little bit of care and use. They have some water resistance, but I would not uh, leave them in water for any period of time. Um, and they are fairly easy to use, but you do need to have some training, such as we're doing today. So the particular um, system that we're using, the enhanced features, um, like I said, it can be used to call one user, it can be used to call a few users, or it can be used to call all users. For our purposes, we're just going to use it to call what's called one to all user, and that's the simplest way to use these radios. The other modes can be useful when you're using radios on a more frequent basis, but in the case of an emergency with multiple users who are not really familiar with the radio, we're going to be sticking to a one to all method of using the radio. Let's look at some of the features of this radio. There's lots and lots of buttons on this radio, and uh, when you look at this radio, you'll see that there's lots and lots of buttons all over it. The good news is most of these buttons have been disabled for your use, and most of them don't actually do anything important. However, we will talk about the ones that you do need to know how to use, and we'll go through each of these in turn. Probably the most important button to, to know how to use after turning on the radio is the push to talk button. That's this large button here on the side. When you push on this button, the radio transmits. And that uh, is the only way you're going to send a signal out to anybody else. Walkie talkies are different than cell phones and that cell phones or other uh, phones that you use are what I call full duplex. Both parties can be talking at the same time and both parties will hear each other. That's not true with walkie talkies. Only one person can talk at a time and that's the person who's pushed the, the push to talk button, holds that button down to continue the conversation. So if you're not pushing down on the button, nobody's hearing you. And similarly, if you're pushing down on the button, nobody, uh, you can't hear anybody else. It's only one person can talk at, at a time. The other important buttons on the radio include the volume button here on the top, which is the smaller of the two buttons on the top of the radio. Turning this button on turns the radio on. And when the radio is turned on, you'll actually see um, the radio turn on, uh, it'll give a few messages, and it'll make kind of a happy set of tones saying that it's turned on. It then becomes the volume control, and you can see on the button on the radio that the volume control goes up and down and changes that bar which shows the volume. The other important button is the channel selector knob. That's this button on the top, the tall one with the line on it. There are several options here, and selecting the wrong channel will mean you won't be able to talk to who you want to speak to. We have channels both at Hillcrest and at Thornton, and we have another set of options called the talk around channel. At Hillcrest, we have two channels, Hillcrest 1 and 2, and those are selected by turning the knob until you see the appropriate frequency in the window. So here we have Hillcrest 1 and Hillcrest 2. And also for Thornton, there is Thornton 1 and Thornton 2. There's also another set of uh, options, and those are the talk around channels, and when you go to those, you'll see that's called Hillcrest T slash A or Thornton T slash A. I'll talk more about talk around in a few minutes what that actually does. 
usually you're going to be on one of the channels for your area. So if you're at Hillcrest, you're going to be on Hillcrest 1 or Hillcrest 2, as assigned to you by the radio officer. Uh, or if at Thornton, of course, she'll be our Illinois campus, she'll be at Thornton 1 or Thornton 2. In the display, there are several icons that can be viewed, and I'll show you what each of these are. Um, one of them is the receive, the receive signal strength indicator, which is the bars that show us how strong the signal strength is for the radio. Um, when you're in um, uh, the area of the repeater, the display icon may show you this, and if it's showing you this, obviously the more bars, the closer you are to the um, uh, signal that's being transmitted, and as a result, you can actually see how strong the signal is that you're getting. So currently, I'm receiving a signal from the other radio through the, through the repeater, and I'm getting all four bars because we're quite close to the repeater. Obviously, if you're getting a signal with only one bar, the signal's quite weak, which means you're probably not hearing it very well. And so if you have a scratchy or poor signal or not enough bars and you think someone's trying to call you, you have to move to a location where you have a better line to the radio repeater. You might have to move closer to a window or move away from an area of a lot of metal. Another icon we can see is the power icon. The power icon it can be low or high. Usually it's on high. If it's on low, you may have trouble reaching your repeater, in which case you may have to switch it to high. And you do that by pressing the menu button and sliding through the options with the big arrow keys until you get to radio settings. Press OK. The first radio setting will power level. You'll set that back to high. Um, the battery is just like the battery indicator on your cell phone. When you have lots of bars in your battery, you have lots of charge. When you're down to one bar, you don't have much charge. If the battery uh, icon starts to flash, you're almost out of power. The final icon you might see is the talk around icon. That's only used uh, when you're on the talk around channel. So what's the talk around channel for? It might be possible that you don't want to talk through the repeater. You might be fairly close to the person you want to talk to, but not close enough to talk to them directly. Or maybe you don't want to send your signal through the repeater so that everybody can hear it. Leave the repeater alone so it can be used by other users. So if you're in a situation where you just need to talk to somebody fairly close to you, you can ask for them on the frequency on the one of the channels to switch over to the talk around frequency. And then in that case, the radios will not use the repeater. They'll go directly to each other. This can also be used if you're out of range of the repeater or for some reason the repeater stops working. You can switch to talk around, and the radios will then talk to each other directly. However, their range won't be as great, so you'll have to be fairly close to the other user. And when you use talk around, of course, uh, only people on the talk around channel that you're on can hear you. So, for instance, if you're on talk around, nobody on the other channels will be able to hear you. Um, there's an LED light on the top of the radio that gives you some information about what the radio is doing. When you transmit, that light will turn red. There's an LED light on the top of the radio. Normally when you transmit, that light will light up green. But if it lights up red, it's telling you that your battery is running down. Um, if it's a solid yellow, that means that it's receiving a signal from another radio. So for instance, if I key up the repeater, you'll see that there's a flashing uh, light there, blinking yellow. That indicates that it's uh, hearing something on the channel. It may also turn solid yellow when it's uh, receiving a signal. So it's telling you that there's a signal present. It's important to remember, of course, that if you turn your volume down too low on the radio, you won't be able to hear anybody calling you. So be careful not to turn the volume too low. And if you start seeing the light flash and you're not hearing the signal, you may want to look at your volume control. Make sure you haven't accidentally turned it down, in which case you won't be hearing somebody who's calling you. Most of the time, you want to keep the volume level about mid-range. Mid so how do we actually call somebody on the radio? Well, first thing we have to do is make sure that no one else is on the channel. So make sure your volume is high enough that you can hear anybody on the channel. If somebody's transmitting or talking, you'll have to wait till they finish their conversation. When you're ready to go, what you'll have to do is just compose a message in your mind first. So say who you want to talk to, say who you are using your call sign that you've been assigned, give the message. At the end of the message, you can say over, but if you forget to say over, that's okay because the system will actually add a little tone on the end of your message to say that uh, uh, you're finished transmitting. When you talk the push to talk button, make sure you hold it down for about a second before you talk. If you talk too quickly, you'll cut off the first few words of your message because the system actually needs a few seconds to actually start working properly. A few problems that people get into with the radio is they sometimes uh, don't realize the volume's turned down too low. Um, they sometimes uh, are on the wrong channel without realizing it. 
or the battery is getting low and they haven't checked it for a while. So if you're carrying a radio during an, an, an exercise or an actual event, make sure that you've always got the volume checked up nice and high, that the battery power is good, and that you've got the power setting on high, and that uh, you're in a, the radio is in a position in which you can hear it. If you're out of range of the repeater uh, or you're not reaching the repeater, when you're trying to transmit, you'll hear this kind of unhappy tone. That means you're not in range of the repeater. In this case, I'm actually trying to reach the Thornton repeater, and I'm actually at Hillcrest right now. Um, if you hear that tone, that means you're not getting into the repeater. And if that's the case, what you're going to have to do is try uh, another repeater. In this case, I, would tr I shouldn't use a Thornton repeater. I'm actually at Hillcrest. So if I switch back to Hillcrest, it'll work normally. Or get in a position where you might have better access to the repeater. The repeaters are pretty much line of sight. So sometimes moving to a window, moving away from uh, the inside of the building, um, or moving outdoors uh, will work. It is possible to reach um, the Hillcrest repeater from Thornton or vice versa, but to do that you need to be on an upper level floor to do that. So it is possible, for instance, if you wanted to speak uh, to somebody at Hillcrest while you're in La Jolla, you would have to go to an upper level floor uh, close to a window or, out or outdoors on a balcony or a roof or something like that, in which case you can uh, most days reach the other repeater and uh, talk to somebody at Hillcrest directly that way. Um, if you need to change a battery on a, on a radio that's dead without going back to the charger, say you want to uh, use a loose battery, what you do to do is to remove a battery from these radios, you go to the bottom of the radio, you pull down on this button here, and push the whole battery off the back, like so. And then to take a radio battery from another radio, you basically slide it up until it clicks in place. And it should do that from there. Once it's done that and you turn it back on, the radio comes back on and just make sure that uh, you're on the right channel and your volume is sufficiently turned up to be used. Let's practice using the radios and uh, we'll simulate a conversation so you can get a little idea of how to use them. Notice that every time I transmit, I'm going to actually wait for a second before I talk, start the talk. And um, you don't need to rush. Um, just say uh, who you are, who you're calling, give your message. Uh, try to remember to say over at the end, but that's not actually uh, actually essential. So uh, let's, just try, uh, let's try a little message here. I'll have somebody else uh, respond to me. Incident Command, this is Triage with a message, over. This is Incident Command. Go ahead, Go ahead Triage. Over. over. Incident Command, uh, Triage, uh, we have three red casualties so far, and we are sending them to the trauma bay. Also, EMS is telling us that there are many more casualties at the scene, over. Message received. Incident Command, stand by. And that's all there is to it. Basically, take your time, take a breath before you start to talk, take a moment to compose your message, just remember to say um, who you're calling, who you are, give your message, say over, and then wait for the response. Remember to let go of the push to talk button, because if you don't, you'll keep on transmitting and they can't talk back to you. If you have any questions on how to use these radios, um, just ask uh, any member of the uh, um, e uh, emergency management staff, uh, Monique Imroth or uh, Dave Blacksburg, or you can send me an email or give me a call, uh, Jay Doucette, uh here at uh, the usual email addresses here at uh, UC San Diego. I hope uh, this uh, video has been helpful to you, and uh, good luck with your uh, walkie-talkie use.